Um, I'm just like announced some cleaning house information for the people who doesn't know English. 好，那呃，如果因为这场待会的讲者两位都会是以英文作为他们主要来去演讲的语言，所以如果你有需要口译的话，你可以到那个 Summit 的网站，那那边我们 YouTube 频道会有一个中文的口译，会在那边进行这样子。OK， so um。For this session, we will welcome two、um, speakers from outside of the country, and they will like share some of their experience about like、um, two different topics. And one is the very like、um, important one, like、um, they are、um, creating, crafting some of the、um, standards and protocols about the accessibility. And personally, myself, are not very familiar with the、um, dubs. W3C's、um, protocol and standard, but as a people, as a participant who go to like ICANN, the internet、um, assigned、um, internet corporation of assigned numbers and and the, what's the next one and names, yeah, domain names, and I very value about like lots of volunteers who willing to like. Um, provide their knowledge and their personal times to、um, get inside the very important works of craft, crafting this、um, very important、um, impact on the, those technologies like the internet and the websites. So、um, Mike, who is coming from the、um, the civic actions, and、um, we're very excited to introduce him and. I will like to have him to like share some of the information and the experience about how he like join and like、um, provide his knowledge about how he、um, go in this kind of work. So let's welcome Mike. Like applause. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Wedge. Paul.、Um, so. <coughs> I could talk about a lot of stuff and uh,、um, and go in, in, in great detail, but I'll try and go off and keep this as as focused as I can.、Um, but if you have questions, please let me know. I'm happy to go off and to to extend and, and discuss this, and I will be here for the、uh, for both days. So if there's there's people who'd like to go off and ask me questions afterwards, I'm happy to go off and, and to uh, uh, to carry on. So first of all, I'm Mike Gifford. I'm a, a senior strategist at Civic Actions. I do a lot of work on accessibility and sustainability.、Um, Civic Actions is a lot of work with government in the U.S.、Uh, You know, large、uh, federal agencies like uh, uh, CMS.gov, VA.gov, NSF.gov. These are these are large large institutions and, and running you know, significant Drupal websites, and which is and part of. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I'll this bit better.、Um, so um, so just want to go and run by a few definitions first. So probably people here are more familiar with open source and the the, the、uh, definition of what open source is is basically the ability to to be be. The, the freedom to, to use, modify, and distribute information. The、um, the other thing is is looking at accessibility. Accessibility is about essentially making sure that everyone can go and to,、uh, perceive, operate, understand, and to use the information, the、um, the digital infrastructure that we have、um, in a way that is is equivalent, so that there,、um, you know, there's a lot of people who have disabilities.、Um, there's a there's a few people people in the room here,、um, and I don't know how many people here have disabilities, but. But there's no way that that I can necessarily know that、uh, because a lot of disabilities are invisible.、Um, so I, I may use the term alley. Alley is a numerum. A numerum is basically where you squish the numbers together. You take the the first letter and the last letter, and you you sort of count the number of letters between there. So、um, I I eleven sorry A eleven Y is a short form for、uh, accessibility, just like I eighteen N is a short form for internationalization. Um, WCAG is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines,、um, and I think that, that it's also useful.、Um, Paul, thank you for, for talking about、um, sort of the level of, of, of knowledge around the WC3, and 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 and,、uh, and. But I think it's useful to think about open source as being relying on open standards, and open standards are are things that are defined by by groups like the World Wide Web Consortium, which which helps to、um, define how. How these standards are put together, and uh, so so um, uh, one of the, the the groups within the WC3 um, is uh, the Web Accessibility Initiative, and they're the ones that are working on the accessibility standards.、Uh, so that's that's everything from the area standard, which is part of of、um, it's one of the standards to allow you to、um, 
to add ad additional semantic information to code to, to make sure that you can um, provide meaning in the, in the code at a semantic level with the, within the code base. Um, so um, <coughs> ultimately, when you're looking at, at open source projects, you want them to be tied to, to people. We're not doing them for the code itself. We're doing, doing them to, for it to help people. We want to go off and create projects that do things for people. Um, but we, you know, many people don't realize that, that how many people have disabilities. Um, it's about one in four people has a disability. Now, this is a, a relatively young crowd based in a university, so it's statistically you're going to be less likely to have a disability. But when you get to be as, as old as I am, or even older, um, you'll find that the people will have more and more disabilities, because it's just part of the aging process. Um, and um, th aside from the permanent disabilities, um, there's also uh, situational and, and, and also temporary disabilities. For example, um, there may be people here who have um, a broken arm, or have, um, they're taking medication and their, their eyes are a bit blurry, or they forgot their glasses at home. These are, are things that, that are temporary disabilities that we don't necessarily think about. Um, but, but when we're building our technology, it's useful to try and think about everyone as much as we can um, and not necessarily people who are at their ideal state of, you know, of being like an early 20-year-old with the top functionality and, and capacities that they have as, as a person. Um, and uh, open source projects can be used to, with, with, with many different disabilities. So, um, and, and I think that one of the, the, the great things about open source is that it is, is looking to protect the, the attribution of the author and to encourage participation in the communities. It really, you know, these are, are tools that, that require users and developers to go off and to get involved in order to, continue, to make the software continue to grow and to, to, uh, to change. So, you know, most of our communities are made up of both the, the um, uh, developers and users. So, um, how many people here have been involved in, in open source projects? Got, you know, yeah, John, myself, um, there's a few people. Um, hopefully there'll be more. It's really a great way to go off and to, to learn about technology. It's also a great way as a young person to be able to, to establish yourself and have ex knowledge and, and experience in, in, an, in, um, in an issue and in technology. If you, if you can get involved in an issue queue and help to engage with experts who are working on the code from possibly from around the world. And there's, there's all kinds of ways to help open source projects. Um, but with accessibility, one of the great ways that, that you can get involved is to, um, to, to look at the issue queue and try and make sure that there's, are there accessibility issues that are known? Are there things that, that people understand about the, the code base that, that, um, that might be a barrier for other people to use it? And uh, I think that, that, um, there's, that, that having an issue queue um, is a really good advantage for, 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 for open source projects over proprietary projects because you can, you can look through an open source project and the issue queues in that project and you can see how, how, what, the, what the problems are that other people have identified. And if you find an issue, you can report that issue in that stream or you can see what other people have done. Um, so you have a lot of transparency that allows you to, to understand more about the issue and also engage with people to learn with others about what is the best way to address that issue. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, anyone who has an account can go off and submit a bug. Um, accessibility issues are usually organized in some way. Um, so whether it's just tagging it for accessibility or maybe for WCAG, um, there's ways of, of, of trying to structure this so that it's easier to find them in larger issues, in larger projects. Um, most of the work that I do is in the Drupal community. So Drupal is a large open source content management system and you can see you know, hundreds of, of, uh, um, of open accessibility issues that are known in the Drupal community. And there's even more issues that have been closed in the Drupal community because we've addressed a lot of the issues. Um, but accessibility is a complicated issue. It's, it's like security or like performance. So there's a lot of different aspects and a lot of different types of needs that you might want to go off and support in terms of, of making sure that your product is able to support everyone's needs. So um, yeah, it, it's uh, any questions so far? Okay, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. I do tend to go off and to ramble on at, at a fast speed. and. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's, what, one of the challenges that people have when you're, you're looking at software is, is, there, is this a bug that's my bug? Or is it, if I'm using an open source so software, is it somebody else's bug that, is, that, is, that, I, I, that, that has introduced into my project? So if I'm using an open source project, 
where do I know where the problem lies? And by having an open source project or an open source issue queue and being able to download and evaluate the code, you can, you can determine fairly quickly whether or not this is something that's your fault or the fault of the projects and the, the libraries that you're using. So um, the other thing about, about open source is that it's a, a great, oh, I, I forgot to mention, I've got some, some images here um, and um, they really provide nothing more than a, a bit of visual distraction. So there's, I have not added alt text to these images uh, because they are not providing any, any additional meaning to the slides. The slides. Um, they're generally of people with disabilities, um, whether they're visible or not, but, but to, just to provide some, some additional context or additional, um, to make the slides more interesting. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, accessibility generally has a, a low barrier to entry. It's not ex expensive to get started with open source projects. Um, they can be engaged with people who have a limited income. It's, it's something that is, is uh, there's generally a lot of, of free information that's available to, to get people involved um, and a lot of, of training materials and documentation to help people get started. Um, there's also um, opportunities for people to get, get feedback. Um, if, if, if you get stuck, there may be people who are willing to help. Um, Drupal, WordPress, Joomla, three open source communities that do lots of work to try and support their user base and get people involved and, and to help help people learn about how to, to implement the software to make their, their, their sites better. Um, where are we here? Come on, let's go here. There we go. So um, the other thing about, about open source is that it's a great way to go off and to encourage both cooperation and competition, or to have coopetition uh, or co coopetition. Um, there's, there's, a, um, there's different ways of trying to go off and engage with different projects. Um, so, um, you know, WordPress and, and, and Drupal, um, we often go off and try and compete. There's more WordPress, uh, you know, sites out there by far than, than any other CMS out there. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff that Drupal can do better than WordPress can. Um, you know, and that's just an example of two different things. There's places where we're competing on different, different ways of approaching technology. But there's also, because we're all based on an open source code base, um, and all based in the same languages, we can often swap code back and forth and learn from each other. And um, that's being done in security, it's being done in accessibility, and hopefully it'll be ways that it happens in other area, areas too. And having that open license makes it easier to share good ideas across projects. Um, th there's also another project I was involved in uh, with Civic Actions that was, was, the, um, was with the, the We For Authors cluster. Um, and, and this was trying to get CMS uh, to developers from, from different projects to work together on supporting the authoring tools. How do we try and make sure that authors are able to get the support that they need to create accessible content? Um, so this was a, um, a great project that went on for, for over a year and, and it was, was, was nice to be able to have civic, civic Actions represent the Drupal community at this space. Um, and we came up with some ideas and suggestions that would help authors be able to um, create more, more accessible content. Um, another uh, approach that the Drupal community has used is something called Proudly Found Elsewhere. And this is a way for us to go off and say, we're not going to develop everything ourselves. We're going to go off and, and, where possible, use open source projects that other people have set up and incorporate them into our, our code base so that we can leverage our community to help theirs. So um, CK Editor is a great example of that. <coughs> CK Editor is the built-in WYSIWYG editor that's part of Drupal um, 8, 9, and 10. Um, and it's a, it's a great tool, but it's also something where we've pushed the accessibility of CK Editor because we wanted to have it be more accessible for Drupal for the Drupal community. And we were able to bring and push some of those changes back into the, the, the CK Editor community in order to help everyone who uses that library going forward. Um, open source also helps a lot with interoperability. So um, again, you've got open standards, open uh, source, open data, open hardware, um, all the stuff helps to, to, uh, to make sure that information and tools can get shared back and forth across, across different bodies. Um, and um, you know, most open source maintainers want to have their projects being used. They want to be able to see that this is stuff that is, is benefiting other people and that there's people who are joining on board. So um, you know, having a, 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 an open standard is something that, that helps to, to adopt, uh, it helps greater adoption because people are working towards the same set of agreements about, about protocols and approaches. And you can hope that the, the infrastructure that you're building is going to fit nicely with other, other tools that are, that are following an open standard. Um, so 
uh, WCAG is one of many open standards that help with interoperability. Um, and and you know, as, as communities that care about standards, um, you're more likely to go off and to see accessibility issues as bugs. And if you see a software issue as a bug, you're more likely to address it. A lot of, a lot of issues are, um, are seen as, as features, and that's not necessarily going to get the priority to go off and address them as, as, as a bug would. I, if, I'm, if I'm running short of time, please let me know. I can definitely talk on for hours and hours. So, oh, I've got, okay, I got lots of time. I can slow down. That's great. <laughs> um, so, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, about people with disabilities. Um, there's a, a number of automated tools that I will be going off and, and talking about, but the, the automated tools are, are really useful for, for addressing, uh, for finding some issues. Um, you need to have um, you know, these automated tools because the scale of the sites we're working with, like a university will have, or a government will have you know, hundreds or hundreds of thousands of pages, like some of the sites we work on have have vast numbers of pages and, and a huge number of people working on them. They, they require a lot of changes because of the scale of the sites. And um, so we need those automated tools, but we can't rely on them because the, the automated tools can't catch all the issues. We need to have manual testing. We also need to make sure that we're using things like design systems that are built with those best practices in them. And then we're using tools like Drupal that have accessibility back, best practices baked into them. Um, but the real experience comes from people who are users um, and to have people who actually have disabilities who can go off and use the tools and technology to go off and make sure that they, it doesn't work for them. That's where the, where the rubber hits the road, to, as they say. It's, it's like, how do we try and make sure that the, the, te the information that we're, we're, uh, we're, the tools that we're building are meeting the needs of our users, um, especially those with disabilities that, where, it, where there's a special case for them. Um, the, there's also uh, trying to go off and make sure that you're, you're including a, a broad range of people with different disabilities because the more people you're involving with different needs, the more likely you're going to go off and, and address the, the broader population. Um, having, so, having the needs of somebody who uses a screen reader is going to be different for somebody who uses Zoom text or somebody who uses voice control. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of assistive technology to go off and address the various different ways that people um, may not have abilities that, that most of us have. So trying to go off and, and think about how do we try and encourage a diversity of users who are, are part of this. Um, accessibility also helps to encourage innovation. Um, often there's limitations that go off and help, help people, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're an author um, and you're trying to go off and, and to deal with a blank slate um, with no parameters or constraints, it may, it's harder to go off and figure out how to, how to address things effectively. But if you if you're writing something like a haiku that has a very specific format, um, then it might be easier. Um, same with a limerick or a, um, like it, it, there is, it's a format that helps you go off and work on your creativity because you can't just put down any words. You have to try and think about how the structure and the format of the form you're trying to express. So, so limitations are, are, can be a good way to go off and help creativity, um, but they are also a way of trying to go off and create a, a more sem a semantic and simple code base. So semantic is just trying to way of, of so just, just trying to build the meaning of the, the of what you're trying to express, what the author is trying to express, inside the uh, the code base of, of the the technology you're building. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to try and make sure that that uh, that there is there's enough um, there's enough here to allow people to to effectively leverage the code for other projects. Um, so when you're developing an open source project, you don't always know how it's going to be used, how it's going to be, be um, implemented. But if you're able to um, release it, then you're gonna, people are gonna be able to, to use it in a way that they, that they see fit. Um, so um, as an example of them, have people here heard about Google Lighthouse? So a couple of people have heard about Google Lighthouse. So Google Lighthouse is an open source project by Google. It uses Axe for the accessibility engine. Axe is an open source project used by DQ. Um, and um, there's a, a project called unlighthouse.dev that takes Google Lighthouse and it basically has strapped a crawler onto it so that you can run Google Lighthouse on, um, you know, using, um, I guess, a node-based implementation. But you can run this on, on mul uh, scan multiple pages and get a, a, a more comprehensive report than you can by using Google Lighthouse on a single page because it's trying to go off and, and crawl multiple different pages to go off and collect information across all Google Lighthouse parameters. 
Um, there's another tool called SiteSpeed.io that does a similar tool to go off and to, to uh, um, address, uh, address that. And again, they're, they're, they're leveraging other open source tools to go off and to, to gain information. And that also has uh, an Axe um, plugin that allows you to go off and to look at accessibility as well while you're trying to go off and look at, at page speed. Um, SiteSpeed also has an integration of CO2.js. If you're interested in climate change and the, the work of, of uh, climate change, then CO2.js is a great way to, uh, to help um, look at the page weight and the, the, the CO2 intensity of your, your page so that you're able to um, help to, uh, to, to look at reducing the, the page load of, of uh, or the CO2 impact of your, 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 uh, your website. Um, so I want to touch on a couple other pieces of, of uh, technology that might be of, of interest to people that are, are all open source. Um, another one is, is called uh, the, the, the Simple Alley PDF Crawler, and this is something that the, the Luxembourg government went off and, and implemented. Um, and Luxembourg is not a big country, it's, 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 uh, I think it's less than a million people, but they've got this neat little crawler that allows you to go off and to, to scan a website, pull down all the PDFs, and analyze them for basic accessibility issues and puts the results into a CSV file that you can look at and evaluate. That's pretty cool. And you know, there's a lot of other governments that haven't gone so far as to go off and develop this, but, but because they've built this and released it, it's something that's actually quite, uh, quite powerful for people. Um, there's also a Sally and Editorially. These are, are useful tools that were built by two different universities. They do a very much similar kind of thing in terms of providing authors with, with information about accessibility uh, uh, issues that are within the content. So um, it's a great thing to add into your content management system, whether it's Drupal or WordPress. Um, Sally is also set up so that it can have a bookmarklet, so you can just quickly go off and evaluate a page, um, any page, and evaluate it against the Sally standards, which are just another a set of accessibility um, automated testing tools that, that uh, a guy at the Toronto Metropolitan University has, has set up. Um, editorially is managed by somebody at Princeton, so you've got sort of two universities that are, are, are battling over, over um, accessibility authoring tools, but also collaborating together as well. So it's, that's nice to see as, as well. Um, has anyone heard about NVDA? Pro okay, John's heard of NVDA. Uh, so NVDA is a screen reader. It's an open source screen reader that was developed by two blind users that were not happy with the, uh, the tools that were available for them right now. And they wanted to go off and think of an, uh, find another, another, another approach. Um, and so NVDA is a great tool. Uh, and it's particularly useful for different languages. Like there's, um, JAWS is one of the bigger ones in voiceover, but if you've got a, if you're dealing with a language set that is not well supported by a big American company, NVDA can, is probably a better way to go off and incorporate it because it, it is open source and they do have the ability to add different languages more, more easily than, than some of the big proprietary tools. Um, I want to touch about Axe. Um, so Axe is the, the, uh, um, I mentioned it already, uh, but it's also incorporated into, uh, um, it's an accessibility engine that's, that's built into a bunch of different pieces. So one of them is Microsoft's Accessibility Insights. Um, and, and this is a, a great tool for people who want to understand about accessibility and, and what it works, how it works. And um, Mac, the Accessibility Insights tool has a, um, a pl has a plugin that allows you to go off and to, to do a fast pass of the auto, with an automated testing tools but then guides you through how to do some manual testing and, so, and guides you through um, what are the kinds of changes that you need to make. Um, the other thing that's really quite useful about it is that if you're reporting issues uh, about accessibility into an issue queue, you can take the results from, from the, the uh, um, Microsoft's Accessibility Insights and you can quite easily put that into your, um, your, your, your feedback so that you can, you can take those. You can take that, that the errors and post it into your issue queue so that it can be dealt with more effectively. Um, um, I've already mentioned Google Lighthouse. Um, Purple Ally is a tool that that I've been quite happy with. Um, this be develop, being developed by the the Singapore Government Digital Services, and um, this basically takes the Axe tool and it, it basically runs it through a crawler. So again, you can collect information about accessibility problems in a site across you know, hundreds or thousands of pages. But it, it consolidates the information so that you can begin to understand what are the biggest issues that you should be working on now. Because often, you can't, there isn't the time to address all of the issues and trying to prioritize them is a real challenge. But having a way to collect and organize those information, that, that information in a way that is, is structured to help you understand the priority is, is a great place to start. So developers know 
what are the things I need to do now to go off and make the biggest impact to improve accessibility for my site? Um, and uh, we've done some work to try and, and take the, the, purple, um, the purple ally tool and try and sort of get a sense of how does this look over time? What is the, 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 the progress of this over time? And we haven't got the, the names um, um, well established yet, but uh, the, the, the default name we've been starting with so far is the PAG Tracker Beta. Very, very catchy name. The marketing for folks have not gone off and approved this yet, but that's the name I'm using for now. Um, so, um, so yeah, if you have a website and you're looking to go off and to engage with it, I would re recommend that people uh, start with Accessibility Insights, download it. It's a, it's a free browser extension that's all open source. Um, and if there's issues you want to have a, 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 a change to that, um, they're very excited to go off and have, have input uh, into that. So it's an open source community that you can definitely engage with, even though it's being, being run by Microsoft. They're, they're, they're doing it in a really good way. Um, I would also uh, recommend that, that you look for any of the open source projects you use and see if there's things that you can, you can learn um, by, by getting involved in those, those projects. And if, they, if, you, if you run Accessibility Insights um, on those websites or those tools and you find accessibility errors, you can use those to report them so that the developers know about these issues and hopefully can start acting on them. <coughs> um, there's a lot of people who are here who have different roles with, with digital. So whether you're a project manager or you're a content writer or you're a developer uh, or a designer, there's all these different roles and all of them touch on accessibility. So it's taking some time to learn about um, what your, what the role that you have, uh, what the, what, how does it interact with, with accessibility? What can, you, what can you learn about that? Um, there's, there's also um, efforts to try and, and um, build out you know, enterprise-wide tools. So as a university, how does this university go off and, and um, make sure that all of the websites that it runs are as accessible as possible? And whether that's creating leaderboards that allow you to understand how those, those issues are, um, are affected over time, or whether that's, that's looking at, at how, do you, how do you try and um, make sure that you're, you're giving your, the people who are creating the content the information that they need uh, to build accessibility into the work you're doing. All, all these, these are things that you can all do to try and, and learn and, and build accessibility into your project. Um, I've also put in a call for, for accessible government-wide monitoring. I think this is, a, is something that the, the tools and the technology is, is there now to start doing this, to be able to look at, at, um, at least getting a sampling of the, the accessibility problems that are on various different government websites. Governments do have a requirement to go off and to support the needs of their, their um, their population, and I think it's really important that, that there's transparency about what are the issues that are, that are available um, and what are the, the problems that are, are known for, for, for different people. Um, so going back to that, that sexy, uh, sexy na uh, sexily named PAG Tracker Beta Leaderboard, um, <laughs> I've created a list of, of, uh, of some, some countries that, that, uh, that have accessibility issues in them and uh, um, based on, on, a, on a, a ranking system that I've developed, um, I've been able to, to highlight some of the, the issues that, uh, that are there. And, and if you're France, that's a bad sign. Like that's, if you've got a high number in this particular scoring method, that's bad. So the best countries at the moment are New Zealand, the Netherlands, the UK, then followed by the US. Um, and I did have a bunch of um, Asian countries that I also scanned, including Taiwan, but they, the, the test kept failing, so I don't have them for uh, the main Taiwanese government on this slide, but they are in my, the, the snapshot that I have for, my, uh, for the, the, the version that I'll post after this. So I'll post this information um, up on Twitter and Mastodon uh, and on Slack so that people can, can see this, this, uh, these slides with the updated information, and I can provide links to the the, uh, the leaderboard information that I've created if you want to see the, lo the, the raw data behind this. Um, but having this kind of information can help motivate people to create, create change because nobody, nobody wants to be France with the, uh, you know, at least in terms of this particular scoring process. Um, so we're basically at the point where we can take questions. So if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And we're, yes, at that part of the slide. Any questions? I think it wasn't clear. 
。哎，刚才有伙伴想要问问题，我可以帮忙翻成英文，<笑>有吗？现场伙伴有对于刚才的，就是 accessibility 这个有问题吗 ？No. All right, answered everyone's questions. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you very much.